let's talk about your pitch so you can you can share your screen and then we can start with your pitch and then you can introduce yourself great so just as a very quick intro before telling you and the, the story of Bendy. Before this, I was working for Cisco, who you may know. Um, and then before that, I was an engineer. And I'm from Madrid, Spain, but I live in London, actually. So, good change. Okay, so I'll tell you a bit about how, how we started with Vendi. It's a marketplace, peer-to-peer, -to, -peer, to buy and sell verified products. And right now, the focus is only on phones. Ultimately, we tackled one of the biggest problems that these marketplaces have, which are scams and frauds in the transactions from the buyer and from the seller side. So we're making a very trusted and safe layer in, in uh, marketplaces with Vendi. Okay. And so at the end, that's a bit the, the problem that we're solving, the problem of scams and frauds, and also the problem that many of these marketplaces you may know maybe all uh, in Brazil. They're very inefficient while buying and selling. There's a lot of time wasted. The products are many times uh, lacking information. The user base is very poor. And all these problems lead to people to just go to other more trusted, but more expensive marketplaces. So at the end, what we say is that peer to peer by itself does not work as well as it should. There has to be some control over it. And it's being demonstrated with the amount of scams there are and with the new solutions of security that they're being put into place. So we've built a marketplace and the way it works is you get an, uh, into our app and as a buyer, you can scroll down to any phone, you would buy it. You can add insurance if you want. You can add instant instant delivery to your, house, to your home or pick it up in one of these points. Once you've paid, the money is blocked in our third party payment gateway. And then the seller gets the notification that the product is sold. And so leaves the product in one of the verification points. And that, that, those verification points consist of this verification network that you're seeing. They would drop it off, the phone would be verified. So to make sure that it's not stolen, that it works, that everything is genuine. And then once that is validated, the money goes to the seller and the product, the product goes to the buyer. So that's a bit, one of the core things that we've built is this Vendi verification network. Right now it's repair shops and professional sellers that verify the products. And the, this model can be then replicated to any vertical in these marketplaces. So watches, cars, uh, clothing, accessories, anything that you think on top of that, on top of the security level, what we've built is a solution that also improves on the selling side. Uh, we built some deep learning technology that when you take a picture, it can detect the kind of object, the color, the brand, the price range. And as we improve the technology, we wanted to, to detect more characteristics to make the selling experience more automated and then also continue building more features around it. So improve the fraud uh, detection, uh, improve the quality of the listings, improve the image of the listings, all done by models that we're training constantly. And then finally, we limit the marketplace with specific brands and conditions because we know there's already marketplaces for everything out there. So we make it as relevant as possible for the market. In terms of the market, um, we, we understand uh, it's a competitive market, which I'll cover in a second, but the opportunity that we have right now, we, we come in a very good moment. Why? Because the secondhand market is growing quite fast with the phones being more expensive and with users moving more to the secondhand or to the pre-owned um, um, boat, right? So at the end of the day, there's space for new entrants to grow and for no entrance to improve the current experience in all of these marketplaces. So ultimately, the way that we differentiate ourselves, if you see here, um, there's the risk of usage or the risk of the buyers and the product price. If you think of just the concept of buying and selling, there are many marketplaces 
but you have peer-to-peer -peer, which have the highest risk at the lowest prices and then you have the shops that are that own the products so here it's not peer-to-peer -peer, it's it's those companies that own the product which have the highest price but the lowest risk because they're shops and they own the products so what we bring the offline and online experience. So we get the low price and the low risk into the marketplace. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So at the end, the business model that we're building is different than the rest of these competitors that we have. We tap into, I think, what will become their next business model through acquisitions or through innovation inside their own companies. But what we do is that we improve the existing offering with um, that verification network and that technology that we built. In terms of where we are, so we started the company about a year ago, myself and Daniel, which I'll cover a bit in the next slides. We left Cisco as we experienced this problem many times and we had the technology background to build this. And so we launched our first app the official app in November of 2018 at the end. After validating it with customer interaction interviews, we started to see that people were willing to pay for security and were wanting to have a solution that was more trustworthy than a Gumtree or Spock or Letgo or anything that is peer-to-peer. -peer. Since then, we've been partnering with repair shops of the quality of Apple service providers, to offer that pickup and drop off and verification point. And then with logistics companies to offer the instant delivery, if you want to get it picked up from your house without even have to move, or even in your office, you could sell the phone from your office, they would pick it up and they would leave it in one of these points. And then we're building a network of partners that offer services on top of these products. So insurance for your phone, accessories that we're discussing now with a few companies that have accessories um, and SIM cards and other, uh, other kinds of products around the, the mobile space. We're based in London um, and we're right now in the Nowist Accelerator, so we're supported by their mentorship and also by UCL, um, which is the university that I attended before Cisco for a year when I was doing a master's. In terms of our roadmap, um, we're now in a phase where we have the product launched, generating revenues with the team. But in order for us to support that growth, we need more funds. But we're looking to continue expanding around the UK during this year. The locations of the verification points are only London-based, but you can still buy and sell outside of London. The detail is that you need to send the phone to one of these points so it can get verified. So as we expand the Solution, we want to go into all the cities um, in a much more uh, scalable way, but we need more funds to do that. Then jumping UK and India, um, it's a very big market. As we have already my co-founders from India and we already have team members there. So we know the market and we can easily access it once we're in a position to do that. And I think from India, we have the plan to jump continue fundraising and jump into Europe. And then finally, the US, North, uh, North America, South America, in that aspect. Depending a bit on the expansion plans here, we, we uh, also may consider sooner the US, sooner Latin America, or countries of, the, of that aspect that also have a lot of problem with frauds and with scams in marketplaces. So how do we generate money? And we charge a fee to the buyer, or we charge a fee to the seller, and then we get also money for every phone that is insured through our partner. And then we offer a 30 day money back that if you pay five, if you pay five pounds, you can return the phone. In the future, through the AI tech that we're building, um, we want to generate money and we want to do pay monthly schemes, which also allows us to disrupt a bit the current pay monthly schemes that the, the big companies have, and then potentially also become part of that um, company of reselling devices like Music Monk Pie or like many other competitors who buy and then resell, right? And that may be in the future as, as we continue expanding. Okay. 
in terms of the financials, um, what we're doing right now is, so in this year, we had an estimate of 87,000 of GMV, just to put you in perspective, and we've already passed it. We're now in 93,000 GMV and generating revenues. So we're on good track. The idea is that we continue this year fundraising, then seed to continue the expansion around these countries. So the app downloads and the growth starts to excel once we have UK, India, and Europe. So after 2021, 2022, we start to excel quite fast. So in terms of the team, a bit of the, the initial story, uh, Neil and myself, we worked in Cisco for three years. We participated in several projects together. I was in London, he was in Bangalore. Um, and so my normal job in Cisco, I was a lead project manager for Inmarsat, was a, which is a satellite company. And so we're building the platform for vessels and planes and so on to have package, packages of data to communicate and have landline or satellite communication. And in parallel with that, I was also leading a team of about 20 developers where we were developing solutions using deep learning for um, video analysis. And it was of the nature of, for example, detecting the amount of people you could see on a camera or coming in and out of buildings, which there was tailgating. And then we talked with a lot of banks. We actually talked with uh, Itaú Bank, mm -hmm. which I guess you know over there in Brazil. And we were negotiating, doing a pilot for them also for uh, to improve the security. And so with the technology expertise that we built in Cisco, uh, myself and Anil, we also shared this common um, will to solve the problem that we were facing in marketplaces. Uh, we've been selling and buying in peer-to-peer -peer many years. And we've always seen how Many of these big companies, they just focus on user acquisition and on, on getting millions and millions of users, but they don't focus on really trying to improve that experience or that security. So we saw that there was a very good opportunity, right? And since then, we've expanded the team. So we have team members in London. Uh, Harry, he's, he's head of operations and partnerships in London. And then we have three interns that help in marketing, that help also in operations with Harry. Then Manny, who also worked in Cisco um, in the US, in San Francisco. He then joined about a year after, and now he's heading a bit the efforts of developing the deep learning models and a bit of the strategy of the company. And then we have an advisor here in London who has been head of auction fraud, and he's worked with the police for 30 years. So he, he's providing very good advice in terms of how to make the marketplace very secure on buyer side, on seller side, on product, which is being uh, quite useful. And so at the end, we're in a position where we're seeing that it's the right moment to build these kinds of solutions. Other players are starting to build, or sorry, starting, no, they've built similar marketplaces with other kinds of products. So StockX, Verify Shoes, We Go Look, which was actually recently bought, um, they verify cars, but Lama, they verify products through an insurance to make the, it's a rental marketplace here in the UK and now they just raised 10 million. They make it very secure through an insurance that they provide to make sure the products are not fake. And then Collect is similar to StockX, but in Europe. So more and more people are liking this because you have the ability to offer very good products at lower prices, but at a very, uh, at a very safe, um, in a very safe environment. And so at the moment, we're in a phase where we have the team that we can grow more because we don't have enough funds. We have the product launched, we have users, and we need to continue growing, tapping into more segments, tapping into um, a, a stronger brand identity and improving and scaling the platform. And for these reasons, we're looking to raise money. And then we're, we're looking to hopefully close around by end of September. We've raised about 120,000 right now. And we're continually pitching, talking with investors. So we're getting there, but that's a bit, you know, where, where we are and what we do. 
I have just a summary slide of how we started in terms of the, the money that we had. So we, we put in myself and Anil 50,000 pounds. And with that, we've been able to reach the stage up until now. So we've been very, very lean. It's been about a year since we started, uh, seven, eight months since we launched. And so we've, we've demonstrated a bit that with not a lot of money, we can achieve the milestones that we've achieved, but we need now to jump to the next level, more cash. I think that's it. Yeah. Very good. Very good presentation. Let's go back to the first slide. Yes, this one. Uh, the sentence that you included here yeah. is ML assisted marketplace to buy and sell verified products, starting with phones. I like the sentence that you described. It's very important to start with one sentence on the first slide which describes what you do and you you could present the sentence here in a very effective way so it was very good another very good point is the picture that you bring you bring the picture that represents what you do so i can see a cell phone and other cell phones on the screen which means that I can buy or sell the cell phones, which is the starting point of vending, of Vendi, which is very good. <clears throat> very clear slide. It brings a picture, it brings a sentence, it brings your name. Very good. And then you start talking about the problem. What I like to see here is a story. When you tell the problem that you have identified in the market, if you start talking about it through a story, it's more effect effective because it brings emotion to your presentation. When you bring emotion yeah. to your presentation, you touch the part of the brain of the investor which needs to be touched. Uh, you should create a connection here in your presentation and you should start right here. And when you tell a story, it's more effective. So you could say that uh, we have Mary and Mary has a cell phone that she doesn't use anymore. But now it's hard for her to sell because there are a lot of people out there that probably would want her cell phone, but she doesn't know those guys. S but there are Mark, which is exactly the client that Mary needs. And he's looking for her cell phone, but he doesn't know where to find it for a cheaper price and in a secure way. And Vendi is here to help them to get together and to make the transaction and make them happy and able to, to have what they want. So we are proposing now a platform, a marketplace which is secure, which can connect, you know, tell a story yeah. about two people that has problems and that you have identified this problem in the marketplace and you are here to solve and it creates a connection right away it's very easy to understand and you can you can talk about the problem and also bring the presentation to the solution in a very good flow yeah that's a great point it's a great point i try to bring this story when i'm presenting like in a in a more uh, visual uh, room, I have a story that I actually faced. But yeah, in, in these that I send through with a bit more detail, I remove the story, so I, pro I should probably add it. Because yeah. the way you explained it, it, it's very clear. Great. So you talk about the problem and then you talk about the solution. 
Yes, and then you go into a little bit more detail on the solution and the product. How does it work? Which is the next slide? Yes, this slide um, is very it's very hard to read because of the letters are in light white it's in white and it's on light blue so it's hard to see there are a lot of text so you could bring here direct the the way that the app works or the marketplace works and then you yeah. can mention those things when you talk about the product it's easier to understand and to visualize yeah it's a good point good point going to the next slide here you talk more about the product i think it's the same point that i just mentioned yeah i agree and all those topics that you included here as characteristics of the product you could point on the screen of the marketplace or the screen of the app and then you you can highlight in the screen in a big screen of the cell phone where it will where the client will see the characteristics for example recommend a price to sell you can show where it is on, on the marketplace on the screen yeah. and then when you are presenting you yeah. are talking about the characteristics market figures it's good however let's go to the next slide i will go back to this one afterwards yes competitive landscape so let's think about the story here the story of your pitch you talk about the problem you talk about the solution you present the characteristics of your product in the flow of the presentation the best way to go is to present the competitive landscape afterwards why because you are mentioning mm -hmm. the characteristics of the product right away you can compare what with the existing product and competitors and it's easy to to compare them with your product or your idea and solution so Think about the story here. You started talking about the problem, then you talk about the solution, and then you talk about why you are different from the existent uh, solution in the market and where you are positioned yourself. So for the flow of the presentation, it's very good to go to one topic to the other. Because here yeah, you, can, you can position yourself on, in the mind, on the mind of the investors that you are different because of these reasons. Yeah, I agree. It goes better with the flow. And actually, when I was talking about the market, then I said, yeah, actually, maybe, maybe it would have made more sense yeah. since I talked about the product. Then what, what other products are there are out there, right? But then how you make the transition to talk about the market? Thinking on the story yet, you are talking about Mary and Mark and they get together and they have the solution because of your product and your product has these characteristics that compared with other, other possibilities for the client are positioned in this low left hand, left hand on the graph and it yeah. represents uh, a total market of -na 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 -na. so you are able to present that mary and mark are not alone on this market 
they are trying to solve their problems but they are not the only person or the only people that are facing the same difficulties they are x million of people that are looking for selling or buying cell phones so this is the market where you're gonna play and that there's uh, no competition or the competition is very low right now yeah it's great great way of putting it go go back to the slide of the market because i have other comments yeah okay so you bring the market here divided by geography you talk about population smartphone users users benefit from vendi and the revenue here it's it's not very clear the difference between users benefits and the revenue so let's let's look at your table you are talking about population and then you are talking about smartphone users which is small mm -hmm. and makes completely sense and then you talk about the user benefit from vendi yeah i guess it, it is true the wording is a bit confusing the idea is what we say is users would use vendi to buy and sell exactly their next phone their next smartphone this information is very good i really like that you included it here however i would present it in a different way i would present it with figures with uh, images let's say with circles and you can bring the total population as a big circle and then smartphone mm -hmm. users a smaller circle inside of the biggest one and then the users that might uh, use vendi as a platform and then the revenue that you have everything one circle in inside the other one inside the other one inside the other one and that you would do per per geography basically exactly okay it's yeah, it's a good way. It's easier to read. Yeah. I wouldn't uh, present the left graph in the same slide as this one. I would separate two things here because we're talking about number of people and possible number of clients and revenue I would I would stick with one information per slide I would only talk about people in one slide so you are mm -hmm. you're gonna talk about population smartphone users and the number of people the potential number of people that might use Vandy and the total number of people that you have on the platform right now so everything talking about people it's consistent and it's uh, it's easy to understand what you could do here is instead of presenting the graphs or the circles of each geography you could stick with one to make it simple and if you stick with one for example uk which is the market where you're going to start uh, and then if you just present one information you can bring also the information of revenue in this case it makes sense but uh, the yeah. one that you included here we have different information uh, different geographies different metrics so i would stick with one information one geography and then it's possible to have the information of the total amount of people and 
the possible revenue that you might achieve going forward. Makes sense, yeah. And then you talk about the market growth. I wonder if if then in the market growth um, add a bit more more to it because this is something I always thought. We talk about the used smartphone market, but the reality is you can also buy new phones. But I don't talk about that market, which is the exactly. yeah. like Vodafone and all these guys, uh, the the bigger players. Yeah. Like Apple, Apple is not that that's new phones, right? But we're still also tapping there. So exactly, you need to include information that is direct related to your market. Because if you present this yeah. information, it will bring confusion, misunderstanding. So it's you need to be careful when you present such information with such big numbers. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so when you talk about the market and you talk about your revenue, you are now moving for traction numbers yeah yeah you know there's the way that you are presenting now there's a break on the presentation so you start talking about market and revenue you stop you start talking about competitors you stop and you talk about revenue again yeah that's true that's true yeah just it's better for the flow of the presentation yeah. and then you start talking about traction you talk about partners and you talk about uh, the support that you are having right now yeah i would prefer here to have only the traction information together with how you are going to increase these numbers or both or two things how you you were able to get these numbers and what are you going to do to increase these numbers yeah so once you talk about the market you talk about the number of cell phones that you have sold on our platform and how much money have you generated by those sales? You can here now talk about the traction, which is a continuity of the last slide. And you talk about how could you get those numbers and what you're going to do to increase those numbers. And it, and it brings to your business model. Because I need yeah. to understand how you are making money. You need to present it to me right away. I need to understand when I see your, your revenue, I need to understand how you, you are having this revenue. So it's important for you to present it before. Yeah. Because you have presented the numbers of cell phones sold on the platform, that will it would be easy to make the math. So you are gonna present that you have sold a hundred uh, thousand cell phones on your platform, multiplied by the average price of each one that you charge three percent of that plus 10 it's easy to to present your revenue but i need to have this information and it needs yeah. to, and it needs to be easy to follow so you need to present those numbers in a easier way and in a way that you can see those things together yeah, I think it does make sense. It's more natural that way. Yeah. I, I feel that yeah, there's a bit of a, like going back and forth to, to the points. So that's true. Exactly. And then when
when you talk about the business model, your market traction, then you are able to go into more details on the financials. So it's easier to to see and to follow the presentation that way. We are we are running out of time. Uh, there would be more comments on financials on the on the business model, on the roadmap. But all information are very important that you presented. Uh, there are some tips to you map the way that it is right now it's uh, full of text it's hard to follow there there would be a better way to present it uh, another mm -hmm. another thing that I would like to comment is about the team it's super relevant it's very important to present the team. yeah Yes, I like the way that you presented here. One additional thing that I would consider here is the results that each people has achieved on their career or the key results, you know. It's very important for us to identify what has been done by each one of them. So you mentioned the characteristics of each one of them, but not the results that they have achieved. So it's very important for us to see what they can do for your company and for your startup and in each in which level they can bring the startup to. So it's important to 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 present the results of each one of them. Um, Good point there. I, if it, nobody has told me that in, in this slide, so it's a very good point because I think the same. I think it, it reinforces much more this, the, the level of the team, so thank exactly, you. Exactly. And um, there would more comments to do going forward on our presentation. We could go into more details in each one of the slides uh, but just last comment here when you go in the last slide you present the the last one after this one, oh, this one. after this one yes the thank you slide i would add a call to action here in this slide when you are when you are pitching you need to consider an action for your audience to do. If you are talking to an investor, you ask for the investor's help. If you are talking to a partner, you are, you are gonna ask what you want from it or from him or her. Your client, same thing. So just as a, a tip for all your presentations, not necessarily only on your pitch, on your pitch deck and your but you should include a call to action to ask them to do what you want them to do. If you want them to analyze in a deeper detail, in a deeper level of detail, you ask it. If you want another meeting, you ask. If you want directly a yes or no, ask. So the last slide, try to include a, a call to action that has emotional context so try to identify how to finalize your presentation and ask in an emotional way so remember that the emotion emotional side of our brain is where things happen is where decisions are made so you always need to connect with the uh, emotional side of the brain. Always remember that. Yeah. It's interesting, yeah. Because uh, with the call to action, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll have to see how you can get, if you're talking to investors on the emotional side for fundraising, are you interested in investing or is it more like, are you interested in supporting 
and stopping frauds online, right? You can ask it two ways, something like that. Yeah, there are there are a few tactics that you you can use uh, in order to do that, but uh, I think it's, we wouldn't have time to talk about them today. But going forward, what we we have here, uh, I really like the presentation. I I think there are good elements on it. The idea is very good. I think that you are an entrepreneur. That uh, I think we could stop sharing now. So I believe that. There is a business going on here. There is a good opportunity in the market for you to to work on. Perfect. Thank you. That, that's great. Great, great. Pablo, it was a very, very. It was very good to talk to you. Uh, do you believe that you. the advices were were good? How how did you like it? Yeah, yeah. I think. It's, it's very good. Like the way that you've structured it is more, more natural and more, uh, yeah, uh, easier to follow in general. It's what you say. It's more of that good story. I, I have a story that is a bit coming back and forth. So I think it's more natural the way that you've uh, organized it. Great, great. Fantastic. I like that. Great. Thank you very much, Augusto. Talk to you soon. Great. Yep. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.